first rule for implementation. It's the basic rule, it's the most important rule. Those of you that are good at that, you get results and you know it. Those of you that are not good at that, you don't get results and you know it. Okay? So the first rule for implementation, I call it speed of implementation. Speed of implementation. What I'm trying to say is that it really doesn't matter what you implement as long as you do that really, really fast. And the faster you do that, the more results you will get. Also, the more mistakes you'll make, but that we already covered, I think, in the Business Bootcamp, that it's good to make mistakes. Okay? And for those of you that are scared from that, well, I hope I gave you today a few tools to handle that. But the point is that you want to go really, really fast. What it means is that you've got an idea. How many of you get ideas once in a while? <laughs> once in a day? Once in an hour, <laughs> every five minutes, okay? This is how it goes. From a moment of an idea that you have in your mind until the moment that it's fully implemented, you want to make that time as short as possible. As short as possible. I wasn't joking about, uh, about that my team is used to, there is only one deadline in open circles when it comes to me. When it comes to them, it can go forever. When it comes to me, any project of mine, the only deadline is yes. yesterday. And I mean it, and I do that, and they know that I'm doing it myself. And, uh, you know, not everybody likes it, and not everybody can handle that, but that's the, reas the reason why we're successful. is because I'm coming up with an idea, and it doesn't take me... I, it never... I can't remember an idea that it took me, at least for making the first step, more than a few hours. It doesn't matter how big it is. I was in the States, and I was in a very... Uh, just last week, and I was in a very intense course. I think I shared a little bit about that in the blog post with the top marketeer in the world. Jay Abram, for those of you that heard about him before. He's, for 35 years, he's the top marketeer in the world. And uh, I'm following him for many years. He's one of my mentors for many years. And I went to meet him personally for a few days. And it was very intense. And there was lots of stuff coming up. And then I got this idea. And I got this idea actually not from him, but from a conversation we had over dinner with uh, some, some uh, participants in this little course. And I went to sleep, and I couldn't sleep so well about it because the idea just boiled and boiled and boiled. And I couldn't sleep also because of the jet lag. So 3 o'clock or 4 o'clock in the morning, I got up, and I started to write it. I sent it as a blog. That was the blog that was, uh, I think, last week. I can't remember anymore. And I immediately started implementing it. And it takes a whole course in the company of what will happen as a result of that. So I'm not saying that it needs to be complete in a few hours, but you need to start it. Most of it, what happens is you get an idea, and you kind of book it. You kind of some, put it somewhere and you say, when I'll have some time, or maybe uh, some of you are just like to, to have ideas for the sake of ideas. And I know that. I've, I've been there. I know what it means, but this is a waste of your time. And what I did for that, and I still do, I have an idea notebook, and it's always, always with me, always. doesn't matter where I am and always next to my bed and whatever. And every time that I have an idea, I write it down so I don't forget and make sure that you do it. That's important. But what happened, because I knew that I'm doing it, I can leave those ideas. But any idea that is for my business is, needs to be implemented soon. What I made an agreement years ago with uh, Verit, because uh, I drove her crazy and the rest of the company, is I agreed with her that before I communicate to the rest of the team, I wait half a day. So, because uh, many times I, what happened, I, I used to tell her in the morning, we woke up and I say, hey, I got an idea. And she said, what's new? And I would tell her the idea. And then what she will do is, they, is because she's a very strong implementator, I'm coming with ideas, she's the implementator. She would go to the office and start running, you know, you do this, you do that, you do this. I'm coming to the office at one and I'm saying, all right, I have an idea. And she said, you already have one. No, I have a new one, better one. So, you know, everybody worked for three or four hours and then can go to the garbage. So we agreed that I will wait before communicating to the rest of the world about six hours, but that's it. And I'm serious about it. You need to practice and to learn that. You've got an idea, go do something with it. I know that you have the issues of perfectionism. I too, me too. Okay? But that's not an excuse not to implement when something comes. And I invite you in the next week or two or three, every idea that comes that is relating to your business, and we'll talk a little bit about what ideas to take and what's not, uh, you just start implementing. Just take the first step, and then take the second step, and take, take the third step. But in between each step, you want the time to be as short as possible. Does that make sense? It doesn't matter how big it is. It really doesn't matter. Okay? Just take the first step. Is that okay so far? This is speed of implementation. If you remember anything from that day, this is a day about implementation. Remember the speed of implementation, which means the, the moment, the, the, the time that goes from the moment you had an idea until the moment that you took the first step. Okay, that's the speed of implementation. The faster it is, the shortest the amount of time, the more successful you'll be.
That okay? What happened with most of you, and I'm pretty sure that you recognize that you had an idea, and you say, well, I need to think about it. I need to talk to my wife, to my husband, I need to talk to my team, I need to do some research, you know, I need to figure it out, and then it's, it stays for a few days, and sometimes a week or two, and then when you read it back, it's not that exciting. You know what I'm talking about? And then we do nothing with that. I know that because I have so many ideas, many of them are falling into that. What I learned for a long time ago is that you don't need to ask permission with ideas. Actually, with anything. My motto in life, and uh, you know, do not tell your mother that I told you that. And uh, you know, if it doesn't fit your moral uh, standards or whatever it is, don't use that. But for me, it really works this way. This is how I live my life: is that it's better to ask for forgiveness than ask for permission. <laughs> and I ask a lot of forgiveness, <laughs> but very little permissions. Okay very little permission, and we are waiting for other people to give us approval that it's okay to do something. Learn to trust yourself and just start doing things. And you'll see that people are just, when you see you active and when they, you see, you, they see you doing, they're coming behind you. They're enrolling. It's, that's how people are. They're looking for somebody that will actually take action. So don't wait. Does that make sense? Yeah. So that's one, the first thing I want to do. How do you choose the ideas? Because most of us have too many ideas, and you cannot follow all of, the, all of them up, you cannot implement all of them. It probably won't be even smart, because most of us, if I know you a little bit, then you have an idea that goes there, and then a second later, or a minute later, or a day later, you have an idea that goes the other direction. Then you have one like this, and one like that. If you will follow all those ideas, you'll be like a, I don't know if you call this toy, you know, that goes like this for the whole day. This is something that was for me for many years, it's not anymore. Today I'm focused like a laser, because I learned to do something with that. Every idea I'm judging it, if it's taking me closer to my goals. That's why it's so important, the part that the goals will be there. In the, in the book, in the, in the Elements of Success of the Life Flaker, I'm explaining the word implementation. And I don't know if all of you read the book, so I'll give it to you right now. There is a difference between an action and an implementation. Most of the time we're thinking, okay, you know, you need to take action. And I'm saying no. Most of us are taking too many actions. I want you to do implementation, which is very different. So this is an action, right? Okay? Talking to you right now is an action, right? Jumping up and down, that's an action. By definition of dictionary, all those are actions, right? But if my goal is to go to the door, that door there, is this going to get me any closer? No, no it's an action, but it's not going to get me any closer. Is jumping up and down going to get me any closer? Talking to you would get me any closer? What will get me closer? Do this, right? Now, this looks maybe the different direction because the door is there, but this gets me closer to the door every moment, right? By Dictionary of Nisande, this is an implementation because it's an action towards my goal. So, an action has no relation to goals. Implementation is only related to goal. If you know what your goal is, then all your actions, everything that you need to do, need to focus there. And then it becomes so easy. Because it's also going to make your time management very, very simple. Most of you are busy all day doing all kinds of stuff. But if you will look at it, if you will really look at it, if you will make a diary of all the stuff that you're doing every day, 90% of it leads to no goal whatsoever, except you being busy, which is not a very good goal. It's a very good goal for an employee because they get paid for the time. It's not a very good goal for any other human being. Okay, so it's not a good goal for mom, it's not a good goal for dad, it's not go go a good goal for an athlete, it's not a good goal for an entrepreneur. It's not. You want to be busy with 90% of what you're doing, getting you closer to your goals, whatever they are. Does that make sense? So every time that you're doing something, we used to actually give that in some courses, we used to A4 papers that you would put next to your computer, and it asks you, is what I'm doing now get me any closer to my goals? And I think that you should ask yourself every time. Because if it's next to your computer, every time you go to Facebook, you know, just ask yourself, is this getting me any closer to my goals? If the answer is yes, go. If the answer is no, which in 99% of the time it will be no, then don't do it. I mean, it's not really difficult. We are doing this, for, just to show you how in business it works. We're putting this, it's a new thing. We don't know if it's going to work or not, but I'm trying it. But we have a very clear goal. And if it's not going to get us closer to the goal, then that's the last time we ever deliver that. Does that make sense? We just last week, we delivered the startup bootcamp. We knew in advance that we were going to do that one time because it's not leading me any closer to my goals. I don't want to work with startups, okay? But in order not to you know, disappear, uh, to not supporting those people ever, we decided to do one time a business bootcamp that is basically just for them with focus on starters. We record it and now we're going to put the recordings online. If you are a starter, you can buy it for 197 and that's it. But I don't need to be on stage and, and work with, um, with people that are a little bit too, too much at the beginning. It's just because it's not in my goal. It's not because they're not okay. 
I mean, imagine me as a teacher and your students, okay? I don't want to work with kids and teach them how to do AI to learn to read. It's not interesting for me. There are teachers that that's what they love, to be able to see the kid just moving, you know, from not knowing to read, how to, re to know how to read. I'm not interested. I'm also not interested in people like, a, I don't know, a, like a Mark Zuckerberg and taking it to the next level. Not interesting. I'm interested in people that are very, very serious on their business. Actually, what I talked to the people that were here are people that already proved that they are successful, that they have something. That's why we put this 150,000, which is, you know, just a number. But people that made a certain amount of money, we know that they already know that, first of all, that they already have a product that people want and that they already know how to sell. So I can just teach them how to grow that. This is interesting for me. It's just, you know, it's most exciting. So I need to check with myself all the time. Am I getting closer to if, if what I'm doing? Is it getting me closer to my goals or not? And you do that in everything that you do. So if I gave you some stuff from the business bootcamp and you say, well, what should I do now? Should I do a blog or should I do a Facebook or should I do LinkedIn or whatever? Just ask yourself, is a blog, in my understanding, in what I understand right now, is going to get me any closer to my goal? If the answer is yes, then that's what you're going to do. If you don't know how, you're going to figure it out. Okay? You're going to figure it out. Okay? And if you're, you take the first step and you put the first blog and it doesn't work very well, so you ask yourself, what should I do in order to get it better? And that's all. It's very simple at the end. Okay? So a few years ago, quite a few years ago, I decided to walk the Camino de Compostela. It's a great example, guys, for life. It's an 800-kilometer trip from uh, France uh, to a small city in the uh, north of Spain through the Pyrenees to Santiago. And it's about 800 kilometers going up and down and up and down in the Pyrenees. And it's, it's quite a grueling process. You take all your stuff on you, with you. And it took me about six weeks, 40 days to do that. Every, every time I know when I need to be in, in the night, in the evening, in order to sleep there. So it's about 20 kilometers extra. I took the 800 kilometers, divided into 40 days, plus minus 20 kilometers. So sometimes it's 17, sometimes 25, but on average 20 kilometers. But when I'm walking there, and I'm at one point decide that I see a turn to another city, and that city will take me down the hill while I need to go there, I'm just asking myself, is this going to take me closer to my goal, yes or no? And you know, and then you make a choice. And there were places where I decided to stay for a day because uh, you know, it didn't get me any closer, but there was something interesting that I wanted to see, or I was exhausted, or I was injured, and I wanted to do, but I knew that then the next day I need to do twice. So it's all become very clear when you think this way. So going back to all those millions of ideas that you have, the only question you have to ask yourself when an idea is coming up, ask yourself, is this going to bring me closer to my goal or my goals? And I learned to do that, and it took me some time, but it's really, really powerful because I'm still coming with a lot of ideas, but because I train myself that every idea that is not belonging to, not taking me any closer there, I'm just writing it down and forget about it, my brain doesn't want to waste uh, energy anymore. It doesn't give me those ideas. So I'm, I'm having, I don't know if I have less ideas. This you need to ask, with, uh, to ask Vered. But uh, she says no, but I don't know. I'm not sure. I think I have a little bit less ideas. But for sure, most of those ideas, are all, all of them go the same direction. So it's becoming from a light bulb that go all over, becomes a laser. Does that make sense? Okay. Every time that a new idea pops up, ask yourself, is this going to get me closer to my goals? If the answer is yes, you need to implement it as fast as possible. If it's not, write it down somewhere so your mind can relax and forget about it. How do you know if, you're, if it's going to lead you to your goal? No, you don't know. You don't know if it's going to, you don't know if it's going to get you there, but you can know if it's in the right direction. Yeah? How do you know? Uh, well, you know, I'm pretty much trusting your intelligence, although, you know, our IQ goes down uh, when we are next to Facebook, television, uh, chocolate in the fridge and stuff like that. But it's very, very simple. You decide, I mean, I'm sure that you're not the right person for that, for that example, but I'm sure there's enough people here that we recognize, so you translate it to yours. You're working really, really hard, and you know that you need to make this phone call, because right now this is the highest priority. You need to make this phone call to an angry client or to an angry, whatever it is. It's a kind of a confronting uh, phone call. Maybe it's your mother. I don't know. You know that you need to do that because it needs to be done. And suddenly, magically, you floated, you don't know how, you were beamed in front of the refrigerator. <laughs> and you open it. <laughs> how many of you recognize that? <laughs> okay? So just before you grab the Snoopy or whatever it is that you have there, the chocolate, whatever it is, just ask yourself, is that going to get me closer to my goal of solving my conflict? If the answer is yes, Enjoy the chocolate. Most of us are intelligent enough to know that the answer is no. And I'm serious about it. That's, that's almost everything in business. You don't know in advance if putting this blog post 
will get you there or not. But you need to think, is that making sense that putting a piece of content that will be valuable for my target audience at one point or another will support my business, yes or no? Now, let's say that you chose, and let's say that you have certain actions, certain ideas, certain stuff that you decide that you want to implement, but now in order to get them in the, in the amount of time that you have in a day, what do you need to do? Yes, say it. What do you need to do? To prioritize, right? You need to prioritize. What most people don't... How many of you have lack of, lack of time? You kind of find that time is finishing too early for you. Okay? This is very interesting, and you want to notice that, but because it's the majority of population, especially when you're talking about entrepreneurs, they always lack time, which means that the first person on earth that will come up with a time in a bag will make a lot of, time, a lot of money. Okay? Any kind of appeal. I'm not joking. Think about it. Maybe there are ways to do that. I was never busy with that because I think that there are other ways to do that. But if you can come up with a way, that's why the time management systems work so well. You know, if it's courses, if it's books, if it's systems, everything works. You know, because people are really willing to pay in order to gain some time, which I understand, and you should understand too. It's the most precious asset you have. Money comes and goes. You can always get more. Time only goes. Every minute that you're sp spending here, sitting here, and not getting benefit out of it, it's a minute waste of your life that you'll never get back. And you need to judge it this way. You need to have a look for yourself. Am I getting enough value from being here for six hours? And by the way, if you're not, it's usually not because of me. <laughs> I I'm serious. And you should know that. Okay? By the way, anything. You can read the phone book and get enlightened if you will put enough, uh, you know, um, <laughs> close to that. You can always get value. It depends on how much are you willing to get. Most people are you know, preferring to sit there and you know, let life pass by, and we don't realize. When you're a tourist in life, then you're wasting the most precious um, resource you have. You want to be active. You want to, that's why, for me, goals are so important. Because then at least I know that I'm getting closer to something all the time. It doesn't have to be business goals. It can be any goals. In my family goals, in my, in my seven goals, what we put in the goal. So I have only one business goal. All the rest are you know, different areas of my life, so I make sure that I'm in balance. I'm not putting everything on business or anything about money or everything about family. It's all should be quite balanced. So we need to set priorities because, oh, yeah, I know where I talked about the time. Most of you are willing to buy time, which means that you don't have enough time to achieve all the things that you want to achieve or to do all the things. But what people don't realize is that every, this is the most, um, you know, the, the, the earth is flat. Everybody has the same 24 hours a day and not a second more. Bill Gates have exactly, has exactly the same amount of time. And Richard Branson has exactly the same 24 hours a day. And Mark Zuckerberg from Facebook has exactly the same 24 hours a day. How come they are, or Obama or whoever you want, so how come they achieve more than you? It's not because they have more time. So it's not time the issue, but how you manage your time. And most of us are very, very bad about that. That's why in the Master Entrepreneur, we, we, we create a whole system for that. But the, what I mentioned before, the most important is prioritizing. And I think that you can prioritize without me helping you, although I'm going to give you a little tip about prioritizing. I think that you know what is more important than others, but people don't like it. Because what's most important is usually the most difficult to do. Would you agree? By definition, if something is either scary, what we talked before about fear, something is scary or difficult, in most cases it's more important. And it's not always. And if your life is full of things that are not important but difficult, then, you know, you're doing something really wrong. But if your life has some parts where there are difficulties or problems or fears, then probably that's something important that you need to get over and to do it. And that's why people prefer to always focus on... They will prioritize. In your mind, you will prioritize. You'll just put it the other way around. Let's do first the easy. Right? Okay? So the priority is not about how easy it is to do or how much time it takes. Priority is how important it is. Okay, so when we are, when I, whenever I'm talking about priorities, we're talking about how important it is, and the important is how, how much can it help you get to your goal. goal. And sometimes, you know, those priorities are pretty close. You know, it's do I go to my daughter's uh, game, which is very, very important for her, or do I have a business meeting? And I only have those two hours, and it's the same exact two hours, and I can either go to the game or I go to the meeting. And it might be both of them very high on my priorities because both of them are leading me closer to a certain goal. Okay, and that's okay. Well, I'll show you in a moment how to choose between those. Is that okay? But most of you can pretty much figure out the priorities on most of the days pretty easily. You just don't like doing it, and that I cannot help you. Okay, I cannot help you to like it. I'm only asking you to start to look at all your to-do lists, which is the easiest way to start. Look at what will give you the most benefits and put it on top. Is that clear? 
And then you start with that. By the way, it's also logically, it makes a lot of sense to start with the difficult stuff, because at the beginning of the day, you have a lot of energy. And it's good to put that energy on something that is difficult or scary, because then you can say, now it's all the easy stuff left. While if you will say, well, I'll do the difficult stuff at the end, at the end of the day, you're tired, you're exhausted, you did some stuff, so you can say, hey, I did some stuff, and then you will usually put it for tomorrow, mañana. Right? Manana is a very popular word with, word with um, entrepreneurs. How many of you uh, have your own manana, whatever language you're using? Okay, so your, your basically your to-do list is moving from one day to another. Right? All right.